Kiwi now to travel and as you remember from last week Debbie has been walking from the mountains to the coast on the three-day Hollyford track. She is back now in the Harvey Norman Lounge to tell us all about it. Morning. Good morning. Well this is a guided walk through the Hollyford Valley so you learn a lot more than if you're just walking independently and the guides are really passionate about what they do. History, geography, wildlife, they know so much about so many different things and the good thing about this, this that I'm about to show you, not that much walking. Take a look. When you wake to bright sunshine beaming onto the majestic Mount Madeline, you've struck gold. This view from the longest suspension bridge on the Hollyford track. I got a wee tale to tell you. That phrase becomes very familiar. The guides are master storytellers, weaving the Māori and European history into this very interactive hike. Day one of the Hollyford track, 19 and a half k's of walking. Today, we get a bit of help. Oh, wait for me, guys. Come on, hurry up. It's an hour of soaking in this iconic Fiordland National Park scenery as we speed up the 15 kilometre length of Lake Makero. Skipper's range to our right and opposite the Darren Mountains taper off into the May Hills. We arrive at the site of an infamous failed township. Welcome to Jamestown, uh, the sprawling metropolis if you like. Uh, so all we have really left here is a little bit of rubbish here uh, from uh, an old Forest Service hut. There's also some of the remains of those original days as well. It's a harrowing story of European pioneers who in 1870 were all but abandoned in this remote location, struggling through famine, floods and medical emergencies. You've got all this um, history that we don't really know about, we haven't really um, seen before. Uh, or, or we, we forget about it, if you like. Uh, it's often said that if you haven't got your history, you haven't got a culture at all. And um, we've got a culture in New Zealand, it's a pretty, uh, pretty good one too. Back onto Lake Makero to the Ponocarp forest of ancient native giants. Kahikatea entwined with supplejack, 200-year-old rata and the massive tree of life, rimu. Mosses and ferns blanketing fallen trees. Bush gives way to scrub, then an oasis, a secret hut. Oh, that's so strange. Complete with homemade lunch. We emerge at the expansive dried stream bed, Jerusalem Creek. Up to a lookout, we've made it to the west coast, then back into the bush to learn more about the flora and fauna. The mountains are now well behind us. We're all about the coastline and its inhabitants, a colony of New Zealand fur seals. The sun is setting as we head for Martins Bay Lodge to be welcomed by our hosts, Skye and Jessie. Day three, boots laced, gaiters fastened and backpacks strapped. We're heading out by jet boat. And today we're on the coast. We're talking about Māori history and also geology. How is this place formed? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is where one of the criteria for UNESCO World Heritage status is met. Major geological change. Well, we've certainly got that around here. We know the planet's been rocking and ro rolling around for the last five or six years, creating some major storms all over the place. Uh, this is no exception right here. Uh, we've got a lot of um, uh, sand on this formation here, and it's uh, actually growing out to sea. It's one of the few uh, places in the country that uh, the sand is actually growing out to sea. Evidence of seven umu, as well as two middens, are here from Naitahu Chief Tutoko's time. Our transport home arrives. The grand finale of the Hollyford track, the chopper gives us a bird's eye view of the valley we've just hiked down, the coast we've just walked and the rivers we've crossed. It's also a flight through the magnificent Milford Sound. Uh, it's the only true fjord in Fjordland, so when you go around the corner uh, you can see the walls going straight down into the water. So when people first come around the corner and over the top, it's usually wow and so forth. And I never get sick of it either, it's, uh, it's always a spectacular flight. And for some, it can be quite emotional. And uh, when they hop off the helicopter, uh, they um, generally have a tear in their eye, and uh, that makes it all worthwhile then. Uh, we know we've done our job to uh, accommodate them. Wow, what a fabulous way to end the hike. Yeah, that chopper flight was absolutely jaw-dropping, an experience I will never, ever forget. And they told us as well, watch out for deer on the hills, and sometimes they see dolphins in the water as well. Um, and 
you might have noticed less walking on those last two and three days. So 15 k's on day two and eight and a half k's on the final day of that walk. Well, that sounds good. Um, so the Hollyford track actually reopens soon? Yeah, it does. So and now's a really great time to be booking. So go to their website for more information. You could depart from either Tiana or from Queenstown. The walks begin again in late October. They run until April. So space is full really fast. It's a really great walk for people of all fitness levels, of all ages. I highly recommend it. Go do it. Excellent. That sounds like such a fun travel idea. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, we will see you again next week.